Hi, in this video I want to talk to you about how to make sure that each of your body paragraphs has a context in which you put the artifact you're analyzing. And by context we mean a major cultural idea, belief, practice, event, movement, concept from the period when the artifact was created. So we're going to make sure as we develop context in our paper that each time we introduce an artifact we put the date right next to it that way we and the reader you the writer and the reader are reminded what we're talking about what time period then you're going to introduce in your paragraph a major cultural context and then you also want to explain the relationship between that context and the analysis of details and tensions that you're doing in the paragraph. You don't want to leave it to the reader to figure out why you're talking about this idea, event, practice, or belief. So these are the three key elements of context. Let's move on and take a look at how Megan does some things with context, some more effectively than other, others in the sample essay. So let's look at one of Megan's more interesting uses of context. At one point, she's talking about a painting of a cotton plantation in the Reconstruction era. And she very wisely brings in the cultural idea of sharecropping, the cultural economic system of sharecropping, as an important context for understanding the painting. She uses a library database source, which is an excellent way to find context, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. And then she connects the, the analysis of the context, which is all the material here, to her interpretation of the picture, which begins here. Walker's image elaborates a bright sharecropper scene, and then she goes on and adds several more sentences of interpretation and analysis of the painting. So this is a really good example of taking an important part of what was happening in America at the time this painting was created and using it to contextualize an interpretation of the painting. Really nicely done. Let's look at a different approach, equally based on cool research that Megan uses for context. Here, she's exploring the context of the Catlin painting of the assimilated Native American chief, the before and after pictures of the chief who goes to Washington. And what she did is she found a website that had journals and letters from Catlin and found his summary of the backstory to this painting. And she brings that backstory into the paint, uh, to, the pa to her discussion as a context for better understanding the painting. It's really excellent research and thoughtfully done. And I like at the end how she connects this story of this chief, which is her context, with what she thinks the painting is saying about hierarchy and quality. Uh, I'm sorry, hierarchy and, e and equality. And I think she does that really effectively. So this is a second powerful and effective example of bringing context into your analysis. Let's take a look at one more that I think is also helpful. And this is an example of finding some key events using the Campbell timeline that really contextualize her discussion. And this is the one where she is the painting uh, by Winslow Homer of the old mistress visiting the slaves in their quarters. And she talks about these major events, um, Reconstruction, Emancipation Proclamation, and the Civil Rights Acts. She talks about these major events as an important frame for understanding what's happening in the picture, for understanding that the slaves are not showing the typical deference. One of the slaves is even sitting down, which would have been unheard of when the mistress came to the slave quarters in the pre-Civil War era. So this is a really clever use of simple context of some major events that are all about the liberation of slaves because she's going to talk in the painting about how this changes what we see in the painting. So we see here in Megan's work some really interesting ideas and, and interpretive moves. Okay, so now it's time for you to go out and do dazzling cultural analysis using cultural context to flesh out your interpretation of artifacts from pre-Civil War America. Now, there's four places I recommend that you go to find context that can help you build a really strong paper 
like the examples we've looked at. First of all, you can refer to any of the lectures that I've created, any of the notes or ideas that I've shared. The readings themselves, especially the secondary readings we've done, offer a lot of contextual material. Um, and the collection of timelines that I've shared in a couple places with you in various discussion forums and in the instructions for this paper are also a really powerful tool. And then finally, I want you to I want to encourage you to check out our library databases, which are really terrific. And Megan found some great material there. And so accompanying this lecture are some written notes with links to some of those databases, but you may find better ones uh, in your own exploration. And data, library databases are great because they're created by experts in the field, chosen by librarians for their authority, uh, authority and credibility. So they do reach the highest levels of professional and academic uh, credentials. So they're a really good source to use. And I was impressed the way Megan uh, did that in her paper. So remember what we're trying to do here is we want to find an idea, a social practice, an event from the same era as the artifact. And we want to explain how that practice, how that idea, how that event connects to the interpretation of the details of the artifact that I'm making in my commentary on the cultural tension that's driving my paper. And uh, I hope you have a better sense of how this works now after watching this video. And I encourage you to call, text, email with any specific questions about the context you're working with that maybe I could help with. Thanks. Bye.